Welcome to another edition of Conversations. The topic for the day is data privacy versus the power of personalization. This video is an edited and abridged version of a panel discussion in which I was also a participant in our own Great Lakes Institute of Management. The panel discussion was part of the B-School Fest Latitude and was held in the last week of February 2021. My co-panelists are Mr. Karthik Annan, businessman, cricket buff, internet product owner and an alum of Great Lakes Institute of Management. My second panelist is Mr. Anirudh Bharadwaj, current student of Great Lakes Institute of Management and a brilliant violinist. We are still in COVID times and so the panel discussion was in Zoom. So here we go, Zoom. Good morning, mighty Marathas and other friends who have joined us for Latitude 2021's first panel discussion. The topic for the day is data privacy versus the power of personalization. I'm lucky to have with me two students from two generations, speaking of a school which is only about 15 years old, Karthik represents one generation, Ani is still in my class, so he represents the next generation. Karthik passed out in 2008, PGPM. Today, he's a seasoned businessman, understand internet very well, has created one of the most successful internet products in the cricket zone. And I would call him in this discussion, the pragmatist. Anirudh, as we all know, is on the softer side. What we first remember about him, he says, instrumental music and his devotion to Carnatic music and violin. So I would put Anirudh as the idealist and someone has to remain in between. So I happen to be the realist, your faculty, content creator, content supply chain specialist and networker. So between us, we'll try to probably arrive at some sort of conclusions on data privacy versus the power of personalization. Karthik's introduction is hardly adequate. So let me give you a detailed introduction of Karthik Kannan and he'll start the proceedings for the day. As I told you, he's an alumnus of this wonderful institute. He passed out in 2008 from the same program in which incidentally, all the three of us are PGPM students, if you may. Karthik passed out in 2008. According to him, he is a curious person. Well, that's a nice way, a nice self-introduction, a curious person who loves the process of creation. And when he's talking about creation, he's talking about product creation. He has seen the entire range doing detailed product road mapping, understanding the customer journey, understanding the customer pain points, looking at business modeling, looking at intrinsic value propositions for customers. And all this has enabled him to create one of the most wonderful products which we have in the market today, cricket.com. And it's my pride and privilege to tell that he was part of the team that created cricket.com, an app that has crossed 10 million downloads, 10 million downloads in the last one year or thereabouts. People like you and me hang around with our classmates, friends and neighbors. Karthik, when he gets free time, hangs around with Rohit Sharma, Brian Lara, Kevin Peterson, Mahela Jayavardhani, I find an interesting name here, Smriti Mandana. Well, the list goes on and on and on. Karthik, the stage is all yours. What's your take on data privacy versus the power of personalization? Right. Thanks, uh, Professor Ishwar, for that elaborate introduction. And you know, happy to uh, be invited back to college, back to Latitude 1307. It was 13 years back, uh, 14 years back when I was part of the organizing team. Uh, feels good to come back to Latitude, uh, albeit in a virtual manner of sorts. So what personalization? And that interests me because uh, I run a business for which personalization is very key in reaching out to people. What personalization has done is to connect possibilities and humans in a way we never imagined maybe 20 years back. And today, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, wherever, I mean, all of them know what I like and they make sure I'm connected to like-minded people or like-minded conversations. 
so you're never far from that so that increases the world of opportunities and possibilities but what it's also done is that we've seen a lot of data breaches happen but it also largely comes because we voluntarily give a lot of information in the name of transaction or in the name of you know socially networking with uh, some of our other friends and companies do not sometimes take adequate measures to make sure that this data privacy or the data that is there with them remains private while i understand that i need to uh, you know be in a network to access some of these opportunities i also realize that the whole myth around data privacy it is a myth because my data is is been publicly bandied about yet earlier in yellow pages directories now maybe yes um, it's it's pub- telecom networks publicly give this information random people come and call you so there is there are both sides to this argument but um, i'm not going to be picking any side right away but you will see as we you know discuss that we'll have a lot more uh, points and a lot more uh, insights around how we you know perceive this real little challenge between data personalization and data privacy thanks karthik uh, let me now introduce anirudh bharadwaj major in marketing i should be talking about major and minor since he's still a student major in marketing minor in strategy a member of the dean students leadership committee what we call in great lakes as a dslc he comes from sap and is going to back going back to it industry but what sets anirudh apart is none of these things he is a brilliant musician someone who started learning music at the age of 6 and in the last 11 years he should have given 400 concerts 400 concerts with seniors as well as upcoming musicians anirudh has been featured by the karnataka fine arts council by the karnataka sangeetha nritya academy by the ministry of culture government of india and is still practicing music and learning further under the tutelage of the industrious maiso brothers so talent personified anirudh so much uh, professor ishwar for that uh, introduction i am actually humbled uh so data privacy yes so what i totally agree with what you know karthik spoke about uh i would not like to take sides yet but i would probably talk more about data privacy itself the topic so privacy as such you know the right to privacy is made a fundamental right by the supreme court of india in uh, 2017 so article 21 of the constitution of india takes care of this right to its citizens and now when we look at you know the proliferation of the internet in india it is tremendous so number of internet users in india currently we are about 700 million internet users and this number is going to in you know, expected to grow to about 1 billion by 2025 so when we look at the products and services on the internet it could be you know websites it could be mobile applications it could be various domains finance domains you know payment apps social media apps uh, payment you know apps for various convenience a lot of user data has been you know is getting collected especially personal data so data privacy is very important because you know from a policy angle there is gdpr in europe it's quite strong and we have the personal data protection bill in india now there was also a recent talk you know from the government that it will be redrafted soon because of its growing importance but what i am interested to you know think about is uh, data privacy has been a topic that is primarily driven by government regulations and policies now will this topic also be driven from the market or consumer consume consumer behavior point of view is something that is very interesting to see i was going through a recent uh, you know harvard business review article that quoted a particular survey done by cisco what was interesting is out of the people who said they are really concerned about privacy 29 to 31% of them in fact were willing to act or even acted and and you know for uh, stopped using certain products and services because of privacy concerns let me take you to what is really happening in today's market in today's market we do not live our lives we 
document our lives. Let me try to repeat that. Today, the focus is more on documenting our lives rather than living our lives. Our priority is to tell the world that we are having fun. That is the primary priority. Having fun by itself has become a secondary priority. You don't believe? When you buy a new dress, who sees it first? Instagram sees it first. When you're partying, where you're partying, what is the ecosystem, the relationship ecosystem in which the party is going on? How does the world know? You post it. You post it in Facebook. Do you have an opinion on everything? Of course you have an opinion on everything. And that opinion gets tweeted in Twitter. Your jobs, your promotions, maybe you don't talk about your CTC. Everything is there in LinkedIn. Where you work, when you work, the whole data is available. And if you're looking out for a new job, that's also there in LinkedIn. Why? Today, even if you want to sing with a complete stranger, you have a new platform called a Smule in which you can go and simply sing any song which you like with an utter stranger. So this is what I'm trying to tell. We today are in the process of documenting every 15 minutes of our existence to the entire planet. What do you think, Karthik? What do you think about this new aspect of our behavior, which is fairly new? I don't think this type of documenting our life is more than 15 years old. And how does it match with our so-called affection for data privacy? First Karthik, then Anirudh. Right. I think uh, once you said that, it made me feel a little guilty of uh, my, you know, the last four or five years. Because as a photographer on Instagram, as somebody on Facebook, yes, we are indeed just documenting our lives to say where we are or what we do. But here is the point here. Our generation, as I said, is marked by low attention spans. And as a result, we don't know what we are signing up for. It just gives us that initial high that we are socializing our lives with people. And we do not really realize that that data could be used against us. I read a recent um, post in which you know, two communication professors from some American university created a fictitious uh, social media site just to find out how people register and what are the um, resistances for registering. And you'd be surprised to find out that 98% of the people registered without even reading the process. In fact, 25% of them claimed that they read the clauses. And if they had read, they would have found out that one of the clauses was your firstborn child would be given for adoption to the social media platform. That was a clause. They had artificially created a stupid clause called your firstborn child will be given to the social media platform for adoption. People told, okay, let me get into social media. I'll give all my children for adoption. So that is the sort of attitude. We do not read. We do not know what we are getting into. We simply want that experience. If you think this is a very fictitious story, look at the real story. Check out the check-in feature of Facebook. There is a feature called check-in, which I myself checked in only two days back after I knew that Anirudh and me are going to be part of this panel. And I was surprised to know that Facebook knows where all I have been. How does Facebook know? Because when I'm posting something in Facebook, it tells tag location. I immediately tag my location. So where I was flying, with whom I was partying, what I was doing, tagging friends, this entire scenario of geographic and behavioral nuances are captured by the social media platform. Now, where is the question of privacy coming here? Karthik, again, you can start. Right, again, there is no sense of privacy because all of this is, you know, uh, voluntarily given. But I think that's where... Uh, uh, you know, the, the whole thing around data privacy is a myth because as much as you know, the data gets leaked out because I know it, it is the onus on companies to ensure that you know, the data is safe, but somewhere data gets leaked out. But the data that even gets leaked out is your name and your number, which is anyway out there in the public today. You still get unsolicited SMSs or calls. Um, I don't know if a framework can be put where your identity or your uh, you know, the way people could reach you can totally, you know, you can't live on an island. So that won't happen. And I think that is something we'll have to get used to, to the fact that if you want to go with the modern world and be part of your uh, social network, uh, personalization is something you will have to embrace and find out how is it that it, you know, if there are any negative side effects of that, how can you work on that? I don't think you can completely put a stop to personalization. So yes, sometimes some of these brands 
they hijack us. It's like they take us to mid sea and then say it's my way or the highway. We have voluntarily, you know, signed up for that. And um, as long as we are able to be careful about what kind of data we share, I still think there is a midway possible where you enjoy best of both the worlds. Anirudh, your quick take. Yeah, I mean, I do agree. So when it comes to social media, of course, in, we Indians, you know, we love to show off and all that. So there is a lot of data that is being shared. Uh, that is quite true. But with the pro proliferation of internet and digital literacy, things might change is what I could always you know, only say. So it's important for companies to balance data privacy and personalization, both from uh, policy point of view and from the market point of view. The risk of sounding very, very textbookish. I have to tell you that the direction of marketing has reversed. At some point of time, we were aggregate news receivers. We were waiting for news, be it radio, be it television, be it newspapers, news came to us. Today, we are disaggregated news providers. At some point of time, we were content consumers. Today, we are content creators. Now, let me ask uh, Anirudh one question. Anirudh, do you like machine learning? Of course. Can you imagine the world of machine learning, particularly unsupervised learning, without me giving data to the machines? The good old days in which no data used to come from a M by N metrics is passive. Today, data comes from a plethora of amorphous and unstructured sources, mostly from devices, what we call as the day of internet of things. And machines get access to such a wide variety of data you cannot imagine. It comes from camera, it comes from beacons, it comes from word of mouth, it comes from the standard database documentation, and all these data gets processed. And then the machines on their own, on their own without getting primed by individuals, try to create some structure. One of those structures is what we call as clusters. They try to find out what are clusters of behavior in the market, clusters of consumer behavior, and we find micro solutions, micro product, micro positioning statements for each of these clusters. Can you stop this? No. The second one is what we know as association, the what if analysis, the market basket analysis, the recommendation engine analysis. I try to find out what you're doing. And if you're doing this, what else you might do? So these are set in stone. These processes have started, and I do not think the world plans to reverse these processes. Anirudh, what is your take? Are we going to reverse machine learning? Definitely no, Professor. I totally agree with what you said. You mentioned content, you know, consumers being content receivers, and now they're being content providers. I probably partially agree with that, uh, you know, when it comes to musicians or professors or people who are into the into marketing domain you know making themselves or their products visible to the world of course they they are content uh, creators and providers but from a consumer point of view i think it's majorly a content receiver i could say con active consumer uh, you know uh, uh, content receiver i could say Karthik? yes uh, in fact the last point you made uh, on uh, you know uh, the segments or clusters is actually a great use case for companies and that's something that we're also using where i don't need to specifically customize something to an end consumer but i can tell that users who like this match also went on to see some other game so you are you know using a mathematical technique like collaborative filtering to un to you know steer away from unnecessarily asking more details but you're still able to give value to the user by showing collective behavior of um, other humans on the platform in order to nudge them to spend more time. So that's a conscious decision companies can potentially look at doing. But coming back to the earlier question, I think if users are aware that there is a trade-off possible, that will be our next step. Because today, a lot of users do not even know that they're giving away data. They think they're expressing themselves. They think happiness is about to be found here because 10 people are going to view me as desirable. I think if users make that mental shift, that is, you know, one brownie point added to the human civilization. Karthik and Anurudh, it was a pleasure having students again, as I mentioned, from two different generations, back to Great Lakes and back to the most prestigious event of the school, Latitude. Now, I'd request Anurudh to conclude the proceedings. 
well uh, i truly enjoyed you know being on this panel and uh, talking to professor ishwar and karthik so firstly i would like to thank both of them uh, for having agreed to be on this panel and spending time with us i would like to thank the latitude team for giving this opportunity and i would like to thank all the people and all my classmates and attendees here who have joined back the call and patiently listened through uh, thank you one and all i thank great lakes specifically my latitude team in allowing this channel to carry the abridged version of the panel discussion a big thanks to my two co-panelists karthik kannan and anirudh bharadwaj my thanks go to kishor bhatter and my entire it team for giving me the raw footage of the zoom call and finally to my own regular team harry and doshi for making this slick video thank you